So chest wall blocks, these are all facial plane blocks mostly except few cases. We will not be able to identify the nerves. We will be depositing the drug in the interfacial planes, kind of field blocks in a particular defined facial planes. There are many variations. First we will focus on the blocks which are included in the Delphi consensus and then uh, we will see the variations and the new novel blocks. So ch anterior chest wall we can divide it into few parts. These are the imaginary or the anatomical lines. So first line will be from the uh, middle of the sternal notch over the sternum that will be your midline. Then midpoint of the clavicle to down that will be your mid clavicular line. Then anterior axillary fold, anterior axillary line, middle of it, mid axillary line, then posterior axillary line, then inferior angle of the scapula if you draw a line that is the scapular line and then again through the spinous process midline again, spinal line or midline. So these are the lines, anterior chest wall block we can divide it into anteromedial and the anterolateral chest wall blocks. Anteromedial means in between the midline and the mid clavicular line. From mid clavicular to the mid axillary or the posterior axillary line up to that we can divide it into uh, anterolateral chest wall blocks. So first I will start with the anteromedial chest wall blocks. Anteromedial chest wall block, what are the blocks we have? Yes very good, PIP, parasternal intercostal plane block that is the nomenclature. We have two superficial and deep. What is the other PIP in lower limb? Very good, parasacral ischial plane block. First just keeping the probe over the sternum. A bright hyperechoic line, solid line casting an echoic shadow that is the your sternum. So now what I will do is I will keep the probe moving towards the lateral side. So this is a sternum and the moment I am coming laterally you can see a elliptical structure is appearing. So elliptical structure, hypo, hypoechoic or anechoic structure but here, so can you see the posterior border also? Here is your pleura. This is a typical appearance of the cartilage, so costal cartilage. Now just follow with me, I am moving further laterally, moving laterally, moving laterally, moving laterally. Can you see a change in eco texture? Did you notice that? Okay, so this is a costochondral junction. Now further laterally, the, your elliptical structure is changed into a hyperechoic line casting anechoic shadow. So anywhere hyperechoic line casting anechoic shadow is born. So we have come to the rib. This is the appearance of the costal cartilage and this is the appearance of the rib. The muscle above you are seeing is, this muscle is your pectoralis major muscle and the intercostal muscles are in between. Can you see a line, hyperechoic line between the pectoralis major muscle and the intercostal muscles. So that is the inter, uh, external intercostal membrane and then there will be internal intercostal muscle and then there will be TTM, transversus thoracis muscle. So in superficial PIP block we are depositing the drug either here in between the pectoralis major muscle and the rib or in between the pectoralis major muscle and the intercostal muscle in this facial plane. That is your pecto intercostal plane block. So we are trying to avoid the cartilages because it, you can damage when you are using needle. So that is why go towards the costochondral junction and then find the rib and then you can deposit there. Now this is uh, we have scanned in the longitudinal or the sagittal or parasagittal view. If we turn the probe indicator is towards medial and on the medial aspect you are seeing the sternum then next to the sternum if you look carefully we can see two anechoic structures, round anechoic structures. So they are the vessels, so which vessels? Yes, internal memory or another name is internal thoracic artery. So we can see the vessels, you can put on color, okay, confirm. So below the vessels, can you see a small hypoechoic muscle here? Can you see a small attaching to the sternum, a small hypoechoic muscle? So that is your TTM or transversus thoracis muscle. So in between intercostal muscle and the transversus thoracis muscle, 
will deposit the drug in this plane. Be careful, two problems, one is vascular injury and another is the pleural puncture. It is very very close to the pleura. In longitudinal scan or the sagittal scan, the problem is when you go laterally, you can see a hypoechoic structure here. Okay, That could be your muscle or the vessel. You cannot differentiate. Color, you can put color and differentiate. And the problem is the vessels are traveling parallel to the sternum. So that is why in sagittal scanning, we might miss the vessel and there is a possibility of the vascular injection, vascular puncture. This entire thing is the vessel, either vein or artery, pulsatile uh, will be artery and the other one will be vein. So that is why TTP we usually perform in the transverse orientation, in the transverse orientation and the superficial TTP is, uh, uh, TTP is also called the deep PIP block and uh, the superficial one we usually perform in the longitudinal view or the parasagittal orientation. If you see the spread of these two, the TTP has better spread. Spread means I am telling the cephalocaudal spread. The TTP has a better spread than the superficial one. Superficial you need to perform at multiple levels. At the level of third, fourth, third, fifth or third, second, third, sixth like this you have to perform at multiple level, second, third and fifth then to cover all this area from T2 to T6. T1 and T7 involvement is variable. We are in trying to get the anterior cutaneous nose here. Compared to that TTP uh, level or the deep parasternal intercostal plane block, it has a better spread. That was cadaveric studies informed us.